Well, good morning and welcome to Shambrook Evangelical Church and our morning service. A very warm welcome to all of you this morning, to those of you watching online on our YouTube channel, for those of you listening via the website or via the CD. We're so glad that you can join us today. A special welcome if you're visiting us. We're glad that you can join together with us today. My name is John and I'm the pastor at Shambrook Evangelical Church. Last Sunday, it was wonderful that so many of us could gather together on Easter Sunday as we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Easter may be over and the eggs may all be consumed, but we still meet together on the first day of the week because it's the day that Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to his disciples. And today we're looking at a fantastic passage in the Bible that continues the story of that very first Easter day. Well, this morning is a time for us together to focus our attention upon our Lord and God. For us to remember that in Jesus Christ, we are God's precious children, dearly loved. As a further three weeks of lockdown have been announced, we are grateful that we come this morning to our Father in heaven, to our God who loves us and understands us, to our God who draws near to us. We thank our God that he cares for us and he knows us. Psalm 103 encourages us with these words, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Then listen to the reasons that Psalm 103 gives for praising the Lord. They're in verses 8 and following. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Well, we're going to sing together a hymn that's based on parts of that psalm. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. It's a hymn that reminds us that the Lord shelters us under his wings and sustains us. It's a hymn that reminds us that daily the Lord shows us his goodness and mercy. So as we sing together, think not only of the creation around you, but think too of the creator and sing your praises to the Lord, the almighty, the king of creation.
Well, as we continue our praise and adoration of the Lord this morning, we come to a time when we're going to declare together what we believe. We're going to say the words of a creed, a statement of faith, and the words will appear on your screen. This creed helps us to affirm what we believe about God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. After we've said this creed together, we will pray together as we say the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let us declare together our faith in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, now we continue to pray as Bernard and Alison lead us in our prayers this morning. After which, we'll go over to Samantha for our children's talk. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we thank you this morning for your presence, for your word and for every promise you have given us. Lord God, we revel in your promise that you will go before us and make the rough places smooth. You will shatter the doors of bronze and cut through their iron bars. And you will give us treasures of darkness, the hidden wealth of secret places, in order that we may know that it is you, the Lord the God of Israel, who calls us by our names. Thank you, Lord, that you are a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of troubles. Help us, Lord, as those who know your name, to unreservedly trust in you, for you have never forsaken those who seek you. In these difficult times, we pray that you will increase our trust in you. We thank you, Father, for the Queen and for her faith in you. Thank you for the way that she seeks to bring stability and comfort to the people. We thank you for our government. And we pray that you will give them wisdom as they face situations that they have never encountered before. We pray that this would encourage them to look to you for wisdom as they seek to govern and lead our country through this pandemic. We thank you and pray for all those involved in the NHS and the social care sector as they seek to care for those who are vulnerable, those who are sick and dying. And we pray that you would comfort those who've lost loved ones. Thank you for all those who are involved in so 
many different ways around the country, providing essential services and supporting and caring for those who are finding and going tough at this time. We pray also for those living in war-torn countries and places where they lack basic health care, food and clean drinking water. Lord, have mercy on them and through the various agent agencies we ask that you would intervene and help provide their physical and their spiritual needs. We thank you so much for this fellowship, for the love that you've given us for each other. We pray for those who are isolated in their own homes, for those who are unwell, those waiting postponed hospital appointments. Thank you for the technology that allows us to continue with our meetings. But Lord, we long for the day when we can physically meet together as a body of your people. We pray for this community where you've placed us. We ask you, Lord, in these days that we will be salt and light to those around us that we will live lives that demonstrate to those around us that we have put our trust in you, that you are our Father, our Saviour, our peace, our comforter, our joy, our refuge and our hope for eternity. We worship you and praise your name. You are our God and we will praise you. You are our God and we will exalt you. We give you thanks, Lord, for you are good. Your love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. And today we're looking um, from the Bible again. We are looking at the story a bit further on from where we were last week. I hope you can remember last week the exciting news that Mary had seen Jesus. They went to the tomb early in the morning and it was empty. And then Jesus himself appeared to Mary. But not all of Jesus' friends were convinced that Jesus was alive. Two of Jesus' disciples were going to Emmaus from Jerusalem. They were talking about all that had happened to Jesus. A stranger joined them on the road and asked them why they were so sad. Well, they were shocked this stranger did not know about Jesus. Don't you know about Jesus? Jesus was a great teacher, a great friend. He was a man who could do what only God could. He did wonderful miracles like healing people and controlling the weather. But our rulers accused him of wrong and he was sentenced to death. It was terrible. We believe that he would be the rescuer that God has been promising. And now he's gone. And what's even more confusing is some of the women friends said that the tomb was empty and Jesus was alive. But the stranger said, oh, you are foolish. Don't you remember what God has been saying all throughout time? Don't you remember Jesus said he would have to die first and then be made a king by his father? Well, I wonder if you can guess what I've got in my hand. It's got to be small, hasn't it? Maybe it's a nut. Maybe it's a marble. Maybe it's a feather. I wonder what you think. Well, would you believe me if I told you that I had an elephant in my hand? Well, of course you wouldn't believe me, would you? Well, let me show you what I've got in my hands. It is an elephant. Well, you didn't believe it, did you, until you saw it? Well, the two friends liked their new friends so much, they said, please stay with us for dinner. It's late. OK, he said. So they all sat down to have some food. Jesus broke some bread. Wow, 
Suddenly the two friends' eyes were opened and they saw the stranger wasn't a stranger at all. Who was it? It was Jesus himself. Imagine how they felt now. Finally they believed the women. Now they had seen Jesus with their own eyes. Just then Jesus disappeared and they said to each other, didn't our hearts feel on fire when he was talking to us? Of course it was Jesus. Well, I've got a puzzle here. Um, it's a jigsaw puzzle and it looks fantastic, but it's hardly even started. I wonder what you think the picture is going to look like when it's finished. Well, I wonder if it's about some animals but I can't tell which animals it might be can you we're just gonna have to try and do the puzzle aren't we let's see if we can start to put some pieces together I wonder if as I'm putting the pieces out you can tell a bit more about what the picture is going to look like I've got all my corner pieces ready so let's see if I can start making it all fit together. Wow, there's the top row. That looks exciting. I wonder if you can tell a bit more about what it might be as I'm putting more pieces of the puzzle in. Well, that bit's right. That bit looks like that's right and I think that bit goes there <gasps> yeah and that bit there I wonder if you can tell a bit more about this puzzle now are you guessing I wonder if it's going to be a picture of the <gasps> Oh, wrong, wrong way. <gasps> the jungle can you see what a beautiful picture but when you just saw each piece lying there on its own you couldn't tell what it was going to be now all the pieces are together you can see the whole picture well finally Jesus's friends have the whole picture they can see God's rescue plan and the result is the best news ever. The last piece of the puzzle was to see Jesus resurrected from the dead, alive again. Well, I wonder what you think they did. Well, they hot-footed back to Jerusalem to tell the others they don't waste a minute. And what do you think they do when they get there? They say, Jesus is risen, Jesus is alive, Jesus is the King. Say some prayers now to God. Dear God, thank you so much that it was your plan to rescue us. Thank you for sending Jesus to pay the price for our sins. Dear God, we're sorry when we are not quick to tell other people about Jesus and that he is alive today. Dear Lord, please help us to share the great news that Jesus is our rescuer. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Bernard and Alison and Samantha as well. Just a couple of notices for the week ahead. The first is that on our YouTube channel, you'll find a couple of new playlists that are available there. The first is the songs that we've sung together so far on Sundays. And the second is the Thoughts to Make Your Heart Sing, the songs that individuals have chosen that have been very special to them at this time. Just to say that if you've got a thought to make your heart sing, a song that's been going around your head, and you'd like to share that with others, please do let me know so that we can share these in the coming weeks. The other notice is just to say, please do continue to make good use of the prayer notices, not only sharing requests for each other to pray, but do take that sheet and pray through it throughout the week. 
Well, now Sarah is going to bring us our Bible reading from Luke chapter 24, looking at the account of the afternoon and evening of that very first Easter Sunday. After Sarah's read to us from Luke 24, we will sing together a song that encourages us to look to Jesus, our Redeemer, who died on the cross to rescue us by his grace. <laughs> 